Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering Luminar 2018. In this chapter nine of Mastering Luminar 2018, I'm gonna tie up some loose ends. I'm gonna talk about some things I should have mentioned in one of the previous videos, and I'm gonna talk about a few features that I didn't cover in Luminar yet. Now, the first thing I'd like to mention concerns presets. I mentioned you get to the preset panel down here. You could turn it on and off with that button there. And I went through everything about presets except for favorite presets. If you find that you use a few presets over and over and they're your favorites, but you're tired of hunting through the different categories for those preset, those special presets that you like, you could make them a favorite preset. And to do that, simply hover over the preset down here in the panel, and you'll see there's a little star. Click on the star to activate it, and now that preset is a favorite preset. Go down here, and I'll make that one a favorite one also. Now, when you want to access your favorite presets, just open up the Categories panel, and you'll see right here Favorites. Click there, and you can see my two favorite presets are there. If I want to remove one of those presets from my favorites list, just click on that star again and it's gone. So that is how to create favorite presets. Similarly, you could have favorite filters. So we're going to open up our filter panel. And as you can see, if I hover over a filter, you'll see there's a little star to the right. If I want to click on it, that's now a favorite filter. So I could go down, I'm just going to randomly do this, and click some of these stars. So I have a bunch of favorite filters. To access them, this little drop down right here, open it up, and the very first one is favorites, and there are my favorite filters. Now, I could get rid of them, I could just turn them off like that, and the next time I open that drop down, they won't be there. So that's how you could add or remove filters from your favorite list. Now you're not deleting the the filter from Luminar, you're just removing it from your favorite list. The other thing I didn't really talk about at all are blend modes. Those of you that work with Photoshop are probably familiar with blend modes. And you could do some blending or blend modes with a filter or with a layer. Now, to access them in a filter, let's just pick, let's say, this polarizing filter. Just right click on the top panel here right to the right of where it says polarizing and you'll see this little menu pops up and you can see one of the choices is blend and there's all the typical blend modes that you would find in Photoshop or here now a lot of them probably won't do anything like darken pretty much doesn't do anything and it's I tell you the truth I don't use these that much let's use multiply that'll probably make it darker yes it does so you could go through and you could try out these blend modes and see if it affects your filter in a way that you like. Now it's kind of hit and miss. You can't always predict what these blend modes are going to produce when you turn one on, but it's you know worth experimenting worth it with if you want to try it out on the different filters. Another way you could utilize blend modes is through the layers. Now I have two layers here. I have the original layer and I just made a copy of that layer over the top. And you could blend one layer with the layer below it. In a few different ways, you could access the blend modes. You could just right click on the layer and go down to blend mode. Or you could go this little gear over here on the right, click on that, and then go down to blend mode. But probably the easiest way is this little drop down right here opens up blend modes, and you could try some various blend modes and see if you could get the layer to give you a, a pleasing effect. Typically, I don't use blend modes really at all uh, in Luminar, but you might find a use for them and they might open some creative possibilities for you. Now, what other thing haven't we covered? We, um, one thing I, I gotta talk about is sky replacement. You probably noticed that I probably use the easiest image possible to replace a sky. 
Uh, to tell you the truth, the sky replacement capabilities in Luminar are a bit rudimentary compared to some other programs, uh, most notably Photoshop. It's very difficult to replace a sky when the sky gets really kind of busy. And in this instance here, we have a lot of buildings up in the sky. Now, you could still do it. It just takes a little more work. And many would argue it's still easier than Photoshop. So I quickly want to just show you how to do it. You'd use what they call a luminosity mask. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little gear here first. And we're going to duplicate the layer. All right. So now once we duplicated the, the background layer, we have that little brush there. So we could click on that little brush and we could click on luminosity. And you can see it's creating a luminosity mask. Now once it creates the mask, you'll see it appear right here. Now we could right click on this and I want to copy that mask. All right. So we're copying the mask. You could also go to this little gear here, go down to mask and copy. All right, now I'm going to bring in the image with our sky. Now we're going to probably just use that same sky image we used before. And we're going to open that up. And it puts it on top, just like it did before, and covers everything up. So let's go to this opacity slider. And let's bring down opacity a little bit so I could see what I'm doing. And I am going to go to free transform, like I did in episode 8, by clicking here. and I'm going to grab this bottom handle and pull it up. And I'm going to just pull it up to right about there because we have the sky actually beginning right about there. So I'm going to click Done. And then it will eventually come back. And I'm going to bring Opacity back up to 100%. Now what you want to do is right click next to the sky where it says Sky here. Go down to Mask and go to Paste and it will paste in the mask. Now you can see we have the sky there, but it's not a really great replacement because two things. If I go over here and I want to, I'm going to open the brush so we could see the mask attributes. And I'm going to click right here and click on show the mask. You can see that it kind of filled in a lot of the building also. So we want to get rid of the mask from those areas. So we're going to have to get an erase brush. And then we're going to have to paint over this to get rid of the mask over those areas. Now, it can be done. It, it just will take some work. The mask bled through on the lights also. So we need to brush it away from all those lights. Anything that was a highlight down here. The mask is going to come through. I probably didn't want to do it there. If you want to back out a step, you'd hit Command or Control Z. That's Command Z on a Mac, Control Z on a PC. That Z is in Zebra, and you'll back up. Now I could do these lights. I actually kind of want them, uh, the sky to reflect there, although it's not really doing it. I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket. Come across here. So you could come through. Now, like I said, it's a little tedious. You'll have to come through here and erase the mask from the buildings. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just want to show you what needs to be done when you use a luminosity mask in Luminar. So we come through here, and again, it would take some time. I'm not going to spend the time to do it now. So I'm going to turn off the mask by hitting that uh, eyeball again. But you can see it's coming along. So that is how you would replace a sky when the sky is a little busier with buildings or trees or something like that. But it still will take some work. You're going to have to click on the little brush, get a brush tool, and then come in and erase. Use the erase function and erase the sky from the buildings or from these lights or wherever else it happened to bleed through. So those are a couple loose ends I just wanted to clear up in 
Luminar. There are some other little things you could do with Luminar that I haven't really got into. And of course, I didn't cover all the filters in Luminar. There are 50 of them. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video series. The video series would be hours long if I covered every filter. But what I am going to do is on YouTube, I'm going to create another video series. It's going to be called, it's going to be called Luminar 2018 Tips and Tricks. And in that video series, I will cover different things, different topics, but most notably, I'll be going over every single filter in Luminar, little by little. So I'm not going to do that series all in one day. It'll be spread out. So here and there, I'll do a video covering a different filter. Maybe I'll do a different technique. Maybe we'll talk about something I didn't talk about in this video series, a technique. And as they add functionality to Luminar, I'll be doing it in that series. I'll talk about new features that are added. So look for that. Luminar 2018 Tips and Tricks. That should be in a week or so started on YouTube. That's it for this video series, Mastering Luminar 2018. I hope this got you off to a good start and um, helps you master Luminar. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.